Excellent. Thanks for coming, everyone. We know it's still holiday time, but we really appreciate you giving us uh, some time today to just reconnect and really see where we're at and reassure you about the flexibility around coding connections. Absolutely. So more of a more of a reassurance. And uh, we know that it's a challenging year to be beginning soon, but not quite yet. There's still time, still on holidays. Um, so that's why we wanted to get everyone together. So Peter is going to share some slides, I think. And then we'll get yeah. going. Feel, feel free to grab the mic or turn your camera on. Um, it's really quite informal. We did, we did prepare some slides just to keep us on track. Great. That looks good. All right. Um, so we can um, actually, I'm going to open up the chat here. I will be able to see it. Yeah. And you can help me out if, uh, if folks are sharing. So we can go on to the next one. Thank you. And it's the norm now. Yeah, Andrew, we were laughing about how we are all more expert at video conferencing than we probably ever wanted to be at this point. But it's a good thing. That's the silver lining. So welcome everybody. Um, I don't know about you, but I, um, I, when I, whenever summer is sort of coming to the end, when I was starting back to school, I was always thinking about what my happy place was gonna be and hanging on to that. So we hope you've had some rest and relaxation or having that right now. And um, we hope that you could say hello in the chat uh, remind us where you're coming in from because we are a big group and so we may forget um, where everyone's coming in from and then if you we would invite you also to share something that's been really great about your summer so far um, or where your happy place has been lately and uh, go ahead and do that in the chat we'll give you a minute or two to say hello From Fergus, uh, yes, near me. I'm coming in from Guelph. So Heather is upper grand as well, nearby. It's great. Hi, Bonnie. Got I folks see Daniel from just joined us. Nice. Collingwood. Nice. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. How are you? Hi. Good. Good. Karen, right. My partner, Karen, was having some trouble. I'll just let her know I was successful and uh, hopefully she can join us. Great. Okay. Great, awesome. thanks, Daniel. Yeah. We have our northern folks coming in, Lena, Campbellford. I was doing some some gaming with some kids from Campbellford, some girls who game from Minecraft camp this summer. That's kind of neat. And Willow Road. Guelph, great. Happy place. Ah, almost one year old. That makes, that's a really happy time, isn't it? So much excitement there. I think Peter's got a granddaughter in and around that same age. All right. And Lily's, get out. Lily's dad is here. Oh my gosh. I did not make that connection earlier, Donald. So this is awesome. Loved working with Lily. She's fantastic. What a what an expert on uh, oh Danica. Yes, what an expert on um, Minecraft she is too, and quite a leader in her group. So that was exciting. All right. So we want to thank everyone um, as we get started here for completing that survey for us, because uh, what it do did is sort of let us surface some thoughts and and uh, su successes you're having with your projects and some challenges. And so today we really wanted to just talk about logistics, talk about those budget questions, a little bit about links and learning, um, and, and really make it informal, a time for you to share, and sometimes just hearing what other people are thinking about um, is helpful. And actually, we realize that many people will not have even um, they have so many decisions that they're waiting on first to get projects going. So, so, um, and that's, that's okay too. So please feel free to share your thoughts in the chat, grab the microphone if that's easier and we'll make it really informative or informal today. All right, Peter. So the first thing that, uh, that we wanted to talk about um, is that we've all had to become really nimble over the last few months and are looking forward to that once again in the upcoming year. So we wanted to talk about uh, just how we could support each other um, by sharing today. So we can go on to the next slide. 
And logistics is the first, um, the first uh, area that we wanted to talk about. And Lindy, I think you maybe wanted to lead off here. Um, I really did. <laughs> logistics, right? So yes, I, I always, I always want to lead because I'm, uh, I'm not used to being that quiet. But here we go. I wanted just to um, take a moment, Brenda, to remind everybody of the way we had planned the rollout of the project, especially when we redid the dates. And um, I know people are really worried, which makes so much sense because there's so little we know right now about how back to school is going to be and um, everything feels so completely uh, overwhelming. So I wanted to remind people about the, the timetable that we have. Um, basically after this meeting, we have two full months until we meet again online. Our next online meeting is October 27th. And what we plan to do then is just a check in to see how people are going and, and where you're feeling you're at. And so we, I don't think we told people that we'll do that meeting at, starting at four o'clock, but you could put that into your, um, into your calendars right now. That will be at four o'clock. And then your interim reports are not due until November 30th. And I really wanted to encourage people to go back to the OTF site and to look at the outline of those interim reports, because if you look at it, you'll see we're really just looking at finding out what you've been doing, what your thinking is. And, you know, it sort of says things like, um, what have you done so far? Or what have you learned so far? And even if all you've learned so far is that it's really messy, you know, you could write that in. So the expectations by sort of November 30th are not very, very high. Um, we then have a third online meeting in February, February 23rd to be exact. And the final reports aren't due until March 15th. So as I was saying to Brenda earlier, let's say that the fall is super messy and none of us have a chance to really do a lot of the work that we'd hoped to do in the fall. If we do the bulk of our work in January and February, that's going to be fine. So even if we spend the, uh, the four months really still planning and thinking and trying some things out, or even if the learning that we do in the four months is just our own learning about coding, that is absolutely fine. So I wanted to kind of reassure people that there's lots and lots of time still to get your projects going, to refine those projects, to rethink what it is we're going to be doing. So that's basically my message, Brenda, is that, you know, if you look at the timelines that we have, there's still lots of time. We're, we're nimble, we're adapting, and I think that we, we need to be conscious of the fact that this is a year like no other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for reassuring us on that part. That's what I love yeah. about working with OTF. They're so, yeah, glad to hear that, Ruth. Yeah, they're just so tuned into the life of the teacher and, and uh, especially the uncertainty of this year. So that's, that's so great. So some of the things that surfaced during the, during the survey that you filled in were things like timetabling logistics. So folks really not sure about what September was going to look like quite yet. And so how that was going to affect uh, their projects. Um, some of you mentioned that your initial project plan involved working with other students from other classes or for younger students buddying up and mentoring, um, having mentors or tech buddies in older grades. So you were kind of wondering how that was going to have to change. Um, some of you had plans that the, the project was going to involve integrated courses and you were still waiting to hear about how that was going to go, whether they were going to continue as integrated courses or have separate um, you know, areas of study. So that was an issue. Um, you know, what, is it going to be face to face or virtual? Um, that was a question some people had, and then others had that idea of the start time. So these were some of the things that surfaced. So we thought we would give you a chance now to talk about not just some of your challenges, maybe some of you have already worked through some of the solutions. And, um, and for some people, maybe it's not even uh, on, on the radar yet about some of the issues. So please feel free to think about what are the logistical challenges that you're, you might be facing grab the mic or use the chat, um, tell us what you're thinking about and how you've maybe changed or um, modified your project to deal with some of those things. So this is like a time to share. 
tell us what you're thinking about. Hi, I'd like to share. Go, Daniel. <laughs> awesome. And uh, so uh, Karen Fleming and I, Karen's in the call uh, right now with us. So Karen Fleming and I are teaching, we're teaching at the same 712 school. And uh, Karen is now at another school. Now, uh, we don't even see cloudy skies and silver linings. We just see a thankfully really amazing opportunities here because she's going to be a prep teacher. And not a, before she was only going to impact a few grade seven and eight classes. Well, guess what? She's going to impact grade one through eight, except for grade three, in another school, which um, doesn't feed into my high school, but that's fine. That just spreads the love a little bit further into another, into another part of the district. And she, she's an amazing uh, colleague. So I know that um, with her new team, I'm sure they're going to be very interested in what the, she's doing. Uh, and I'm, I'm taking now a, a more of a mentoring um, role with her. We had a meeting yesterday and we're just, I'm terribly excited about uh, what September is going to be looking like uh, for Karen and I working together. She's learned a lot about computer science and the hardware, right? Uh, so it's been fantastic. So I, I don't know, that wasn't a challenge. I mean, we overcame that already. We're, we're feeling good about that, aren't we, Karen? Yeah, I was just going to add to that. We do really want to help improve uh, enrollment in your program as well, though. So the nice thing is I still have the connections because I know all the teachers in the grade 7 8 at his school. So we're looking to design the units, create the slideshows to teach, and be able to pass those on as already prepared units for the teachers at his school. Yeah, the two, two themes came out, two goals that we had, was we want to take the students who are going to leave her grade um, every grade that she's teaching, let's say the grade eights, they wouldn't see a computer science or studies course or engineering course until grade 10. So they'd skip a year once they entered into high school. So we wanted to leave them with such a great impression that they would be chomping at the bit looking for that grade 10, you know, uh, ICS 2.0 or TEJ 2.0 course. And, and like Karen just said, I'll repeat, uh, she's still strongly connected to the seven eights in my school. And we, the second thing we want to do is build these resources we can put in any intermediate uh, teacher's hands so they can bring that coding into their classroom. How does that sound to y'all? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. You already know your assignments. You know you can still keep together and collaborate. Sounds good. Exciting. Yep. Um, now, um, Harinder raises an issue there that's interesting, and I wonder how it, it fits with you folks because um, – Protocols for the use of technology in schools, I guess, is one of the one of the things that'll be on people's minds. Do you have any insights on how that's working in your board? Not quite yet in detail. However, in our planning meeting yesterday, Karen and I, um, we, uh, I, I'm sure you appreciate this. We stepped away from the actual coding of lin uh, links and we started looking at pseudocode. And then from pseudocode, we went to unplugged activities. Uh, and, you know, just understanding the four functions of a computer, like input, storage, process, output. And what are some activities we can do about uh, thinking through problems, decomposition, a big word for little kids, but just breaking it down into different parts and so problem solving. So we uh, spent quite a bit of time yesterday um, thinking through how um, unplugged activities would fit into it. And then um, looking because, yeah, we're going to have limited access to technology, I think. And Karen is thinking maybe less than half a dozen devices. And then there's, I don't know, Karen, you speak to that. It's going to be your classroom. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I muted myself by accident. Um, well, all I was saying was that uh, one of the, when I read the board, the information from the board, it said that they, they weren't going to be having the communal uh, computer carts that they're going to assign computers to classrooms. So instead of having carts that can move around, each classroom is going to have maybe five computers. Mm -hmm. So that really limits the uh, amount of time. So it's going to be looking at other ways to bring it in. So I may bring it in through literacy where we can do our reading centers. I do daily five. Um, and maybe that'll become one of the five sessions that they do each day, 20 instead of an hour of code every week, it's 20 minutes every day or one group each day gets it. I don't know. So we'll look at the logistics will be a little bit different, but the pseudocode is a big thing, getting them just to understand the importance of the language 
and right. how every little step and every little beast, uh, every little bit of uh, information is important and the order in which that information comes is important. Syntax and yeah, all that good computational thinking yep. element. Sounds good. All right. So I, I see Heather saying that the mm -hmm. uh, going to run Hacker Gal. Um, so that we love Hacker Gal, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, we know them really well and they use links, of course, um, because they're smart and uh, and wanted something that was uh, a, a text-based coding environment that was well founded and well grounded in uh, in the pedagogy um, so so then you're going to look at your own learning th through that because you know as as we remind everybody this is about your learning um, around the girls and so forth uh, so I'm just wondering how you're how you're thinking about that um, are you still specific to us because what? Girls was a focus. Um, Heather, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, is that what you meant, Peter? For Heather to grab the mic and tell us about uh, how she's connecting with Hacker Gal. Yeah, and how that's going to impact, uh, how that's going to um, serve the coding connections project from perspective of your own learning and artifacts and so forth. Um. So what we're looking at doing, um, because originally we had. Um, thought about putting the whole project into like our grade nine program and just with the way things are going we're still allowed to run clubs as long as you can run those clubs virtually so um, Katie was really intrigued by the hacker gal because um, she did the we both did the gaming webinar um, in right May. Um, and so we decided that since logistically the product that we initially proposed is probably not going to work this year because um, we're trying to figure out how we share like the things you're talking about, how to share equipment and everything, whereas we could run that club virtually no problem. For me, there's going to be a ton of learning because I had never even coded before I sat down and started those webinars. And um, I don't, I'm guessing a lot of those girls will come in knowing way more than I will. Because I look at my own children, you know, in elementary school, my son's using Scratch and Scratch Junior and Tinker and he's you know, light years ahead of me, and uh, I have no idea, you know, like, really what the possibilities are with this, and so um, there's going to be immense learning for me, and then from there, we do want to embed it into our science courses. The great thing about working with Katie, and I know she can't be here, but Katie's our design tech teacher, so she's in, she's actually split between three departments. She's in tech science and math. And so she just branches out all over the place. Um, and then having, working with her for this, it brings in our computer science teacher um, and he's been helping us. And so we're hoping, he really wants girls in his program. He can't get girls in those senior computer science courses that were already mentioned. And so we're just hoping that this is bridging a gap and it's sort of getting more people in the building involved in it. And it's, there's, a, there's a ton of learning definitely for me that's taking you know that, with it. That sounds like a great way. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, it's actually, mm -hmm. um, it actually is a great way to solve the logistics problem. And I sort of jumped ahead in the agenda because <laughs> you're to the, to the learning piece because- yes. Because that's what I sort of do. Um, and, um, yeah, that's going to be fantastic. I'm really happy you're working with Hacker Gal. Um, you'll hear their new, uh, their new stuff very shortly. We've been working with them because we, uh, we work with Hacker Gal uh, regularly to talk about ideas and thoughts and so forth. So you'll hear, about, you'll hear from them in the next week or two anyway. And uh, that's great. And I'm, just, I'm just going to chime in and say, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of the agenda, but I do want to say, don't forget to be um, logging somehow, tracking somehow the learning that you're doing, because that's fascinating. I loved your description there of um, how much you're learning. 
And that for us is very valuable. We'll talk about that a little more in the next, uh, in the next agenda item, but I just wanted to um, jump at that because it made me very excited to hear you saying that. And I just want to jump in too, um, if possible. Not only do we have a science link, but uh, coding is now officially in the math program. It's in the algebra mm -hmm. strand. It's, it's, really? a full, it's full strand. It's in the algebra component of the new math curriculum. Grade one so, through grade eight. Yeah, it's amazing. It starts in grade one. Mm -hmm. Just in case people don't, aren't aware of that yet and haven't really looked at the uh, math curriculum, it is officially in the math curriculum now. Karen put Absolutely. together all the expectations related to coding from grade one through grade eight in a, in a table. And then we started going through it and we started coming up with examples of uh, problems that we would solve with coding and what would the pseudo code look like. It was a bit of an education for, for Karen and it was, it was a re-education for me because I was learning how to teach again. You know, it, it, was, uh, I, it was very hands-on and I was training another adult and thinking about the kids as well fantastic uh, experience. Nice. So there'll be all that learning that might relate to the new curriculum, the revised curriculum. That's, that's something to keep track of as well for your, for your own, to talk about your own learning. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. It's, ni it's nice because it's consistent wording throughout and from grade one to grade eight each year, it adds one, like grade one, it's sequential. Then two, it, it's sequential and concurrent. Grade three is sequential, concurrent, and repeating grade four sequential concurrent repeating and nesting and it just so each year it's one more skill that gets added mm -hmm. on to it i think I, speak up. I think your channel i think your challenge will be not doing all the grid once you get into links you'll be doing up to grade eight with grade twos <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but why not so like, why not i think it not why not because, yeah right because the one thing is they have to look at the idea that they're they're giving us this curriculum but the grade eights have, have ne some of the grade eights have never had it before. So they That's have what true. they want you to get and you can always learn more. So always. Yes. I know. And in more complex ways. So the more you we get into it. Story next uh, in, in a little while, Brenda's going to invite me mm -hmm. to tell that story. Yeah. So we have some other, so thank you. Yes. We're going to talk a little bit about how you might connect and to the, the social emotional learning piece around that new curriculum or a revised curriculum too, because there's a lot of opportunities we see coding and we've never needed coding in the curriculum, but we're glad it's there now. Um, and that, that opens up a whole new uh, approach for us as educators. Pretty cool. Anyone else want to comment on their changes or their, um, their flexibility or how they've rethought things or any um, challenges that they've had? I've noticed people are saying they're really not sure about Meg. And there's a lot of uncertainty. So yes, you might need to wait a little bit and um, see how the tech is going to be distributed, see where you might jump in. So now you know you've got time. You don't have to have that all figured out right now. Um, Bonnie's had a tr teacher transfer. Sebastian's got his project running from Kenya, connect collaboration from Kenya, which is pretty exciting. So I just wanted to give some other people a chance to grab the mic. Sebastian, you're being awfully quiet. I'm gonna give you a shout out. You should be extremely proud of the progress that has been made. And I, I'm grateful to you for um, taking on that, making that connection. Uh, or that continued connection and uh, pitching this idea to send over equipment so that we can have this partnership. So um, I have no problem not being quiet <laughs> about mm -hmm. that because that, that was, that was, that's huge. And just the sharing that they're sending our way or your way, then you're sharing with all of us is just so powerful. And I can't wait once things settle a bit, uh, when we connect our students from both communities um, with, the amazing, amazing partnership that's going to come out of it. But yeah, our, we ourselves are in a jam. We have no devices. They've all been removed from our classrooms in our school community. Actually, 220 schools within the TDSB had their devices removed. And uh, there is no plan to bring those back for the first half of the school year. They are looking at to see how they might address uh, in the greater need community areas, uh, financially some devices. So I'm going into a class where I had 33 devices to zero. Um, don't even get me started on which of those belong to me. <laughs> so that's, and uh, so we, uh, 
we're in a jam. Like, yes, we have unplugged, but unplugged only goes so far. And, uh, and at this time, our board doesn't know who has devices going into um, remote learning because looking at trends around the world, most schools had school closures after two weeks of opening. Uh, and we are aware that uh, many students did not make requests for devices in the spring. And so there's still a gap within the TDSB. And how are we going to address that? So parents will be informed that they can make a request should school closures happen and they can make a request so they can have devices at home. So there are so many unknowns and things that are out of our control um, that we're... Um, that we can't address at this time until you know the ministry makes a decision and then the board figures out what they can and can't do and then where that leaves our administration and then us there so if you you know if you see us asking or you know begging <laughs> for a, access to additional grants and funds that's us just trying to yeah and i'm sure we're not alone right uh, that's mm -hmm. everyone just trying to fill a very big gap out there um we already knew that there was an equity divide within the home and we already knew there was an equity divide from school community to school community. But then those of us who filled that gap are now without. Um, so those, those are our things. So lots of big feelings and emotions around that. Uh, so whenever I see something shared from Sebastian from the partners over in, uh, in, in Kenya, I'm just like, I get goosebumps, right? Like they're, mm -hmm. they're exploring, they're ready to share, they're ready to mentor our students. Um, and Sebastian, again, you're still quiet. I'm just waiting for you to jump in. Sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> my AirPods wouldn't, wouldn't uh, connect to my, <laughs> my Bluetooth, so I wasn't able to say anything. But uh, thank you, Zoe, for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I'm also really excited because, you know, once um, once they got the micro bit and the climate action kits, it was kind of like very uh, well structured in terms of our contacts that's helping out the students and knowing what to do. Um, so I'm really glad that there's traction and there's stuff uh, going on in Kenya, even though the students right now um, aren't going to school and uh, it seems like they're not going to be in school until at least January. Um, but we have them uh, looped in and we're just kind of waiting, uh, like Delia said, to see what's going on in, in Toronto with tech and everything and um, where people are going to be placed and then just making that connection. So there's definitely movement and that is exciting. Um, with all these unknowns, it's, it's something positive. I think it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. And I'm noticing lots of issues around uh, people interested in sharing. So we'll talk a little bit about how we might support each other in that, um, even if it's just to share some of these resources and thinking about unplugged activities that you're, you're doing. Um, you know, we've got the chat here, but maybe we need to, um, and that'll be up to you folks, whether you want to um, create a community for that sharing. Um, Samantha, did you want to give it a try? Yeah, sorry, I was driving, so I, hands-free, don't worry, so I was on my phone and I wasn't able to talk. So we, um, Mel is not on the call, Mel Mulcaster, and Andrew is on the call from U of Ottawa, and uh, we're from Peel. So we, we have had some meetings, we had to do, we thought it was a big change, but then we looked back at our original proposal, and I, I don't think we're changing as much as as we thought we had to. We are, we are looking at French. We think that that, that whole French piece of side links is, is really awesome and we want to be able to incorporate coding into our, into our French classes. So that was our focus, um, looking at French immersion as well as core French. And so our shift now, we originally we were going to use all of our funds for release time for teachers, but we realized that trying to get supply teachers now is going to be impossible. You'll be lucky if you get enough teachers in the classroom, let alone have a, a supply teacher for release days. So we've redirected now and what we're going to use our funds for is to create a, or pull in a writing team. And that writing team, Andrew and Mel and I will, will all be part of that and we'll be working together to create some resources that focus on, and this maybe is a little bit ambitious, but we're focusing on the French side of links also pulling in, same as the other person, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name, the idea of coding because um, I've been involved with some of the coding, coding writing that we're doing for elementary and Peel. So this lends itself perfectly to bring in, for French immersion, bring in that French, or sorry, the math coding piece into 
the French curriculum. And then Andrew now has a really great idea. So we had the core French, the French immersion, and he's now looking at a French school in Ottawa. So we'll sort of cross those, those three realms. And we also, because of where we are right now, there's gonna be so many kids that are learning from home. So we're gonna be focusing a little bit more on that, putting together lessons through a website that really anybody can use, not just Ottawa and, and Peel, but lessons that are created that focus on French, coding, using links, and make that available to educators, but in a self-paced way that kids can do it from home. So that, that's our focus. It's a, wow. it's a, a bit of a, it's a big one, but I think that that kind of, those kind of activities are critical right now for all of us. Great. Samantha, I, I, I wanted to just jump in again and say all of this um, process of changing your, and shifting your plans Try and capture that as well when you do your interim report, because I think that that is so awesome. That whole process that you just described of how you were at first were going to use the money for release time and because of the situation you realized you could not and how, you know, what your thinking was and how you came to this new planning. Um, it's, it's so interesting because, you know, sometimes from something that is not good comes something that is very, very awesome. So um, I really encourage you to try and capture that when you do your interim report because it's, it's golden, right? This is like wonderful stuff showing your own um, voyage to getting to where you eventually landed. Yeah, I mean, when we did our project, we, we weren't in home learning and we, the math curriculum hadn't come out. So it's been a really interesting journey as we've gone and we haven't really when it started, we're still planning, but it's been an interesting journey. And I agree with you. There's so much good that can come out of the experience that we've just gone through and where we're going, especially for modern learning. We really need to, to capture that. And so hopefully we can do that in this project. And can I just add to that, like some of the groups may not yet be where you are. Like some of the groups may not have landed yet. And I, I don't want people to start to panic and say, wow, these other teams have already figured this all out. You know, it is a process and you will get there. So I think that's very important. Like it's messy in the beginning, isn't it? Like as you did this in the beginning, there must've been moments where you're like, holy, what on earth are we going to do? But you do eventually, you have to trust in the process, I think. Mm -hmm. Peter, can you turn, go to the next slide maybe? Because I think this is a really great segue into the other things that we're surfacing through, um, through the survey um, and, and it's, it's this uh, idea that Lindy's capturing so well is this idea of us learning out loud and that the Lindy, I, I, do you want to reinforce that again about yeah, what this project I, is really about? I really want to do that because yeah. um, if you stop and think about um, code to learn, they have many sub -pro projects that they're working on, but the one that they decided to do with OTF is really inspired by the notion of teacher learning. And in fact, when we looked at the many applications that we got for the, the little pockets of funding that we're um, handing over to you folks, we were really interested in those where they focused on what teachers themselves, what you, your team members are going to be learning. And this is what we want to keep reminding you about. While of course we're interested in, you know, where you end up and what you end up doing with the students, we are primarily interested in your own learning and you are the focus of this project. And I think sometimes as teachers, we, we skip over that or we forget that, but we really, really want to capture what you learned, even more than what your students learned, we're interested in what you learned through this process. Um, and um, I know, Brenda, you will continue on to talk about collaboration and co-learning, but I, I, I can't emphasize enough that from where I'm sitting as the person reporting on what we did here, what it is you learned, and that includes the things, you know, when you make mistakes, which uh, I guess Bob Ross says there's no such thing as, as mistakes, there's just uh, happy accidents, he calls them. So, things that end up, you know, going in a different direction from where you first thought they would go, those are exactly the kinds of things we want you to tell us about. We want you to track them as they happen and then to explain to us what you decided to do as a result. 
Um, you know, there is no bad learning as we always tell our students and as teachers, we have to remind ourselves too that the messiness is really part of what we, uh, what we have to go through in order to learn. So please keep thinking about what it is you're doing, what is your own learning here, um, and how can you capture that in a way that doesn't allow you to forget about it because um, we're very interested in that process that you're going through. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And, and some of those things that were surf surfacing from you were, you know, things that, you, like, like Lindy says, that you can capture. So how is your team adjusting? Um, what is collaboration looking like in the time of COVID and getting back to school and different priorities and protocols that your boards have? Um, you know, what, what is, how are you going to be, and Heather mentions this so well earlier in, the, in, the, in our meeting today, how are you going to learn along with your students? What is that going to look like? And, and that will be you sharing, you know, how that felt for you. It might be even that. Um, and that might be a new experience with how are you, you know, how are you, how do students roles change when they know more than you? <laughs> um, and what is your role as a coach in that process? Um, many of you have mentioned in the survey that you have other kinds of technology available to you. And I think given what we're hearing now about the issues around how many, how, what your access might be to computers and iPads, et cetera, maybe you're going to, your learning is going to branch out to using other things. And, and how can you relate that back to what you know about links or computational thinking, or, you know, we're, we're wide open on how you adapt there. And then some of you also, and feel free to jump in and, and grab the mic or, or if you have a, something to share, let us know in the chat, because some of you also had projects that involved Microworlds Junior, and which for kindergarten students, for example, which involved a lot of support from older students that may not be able to happen. So there might be ways you need to possibly rethink that. And I was gonna invite Peter to talk a little bit about, in, that relates to this so well, um, because we were sort of new to using links with younger students and he had the opportunity to uh, have summer camp with some grade ones using links. And do you have some stories you might want to share about that, that, that might have, you had insights anyway from working with those students this summer? So it was uh, through IHUB and District School Board of Niagara, they were running their summer school program. Mm -hmm. And um, so they had a grade one, two group and they had a grade three, five group and, and so forth. But um, so um, my colleague, Michael Quinn, was a little nervous about doing uh, links with a grade one, two, but um, I had to remind him that my first experience with text-based coding was with grade ones. Um, with basic and then in 1980 actually it was with uh with the first versions of logo which um at the turtle graphics uh er, level are not that different from links because links is logo developed by the same company uh as uh, as logo and so i had lots of experience with very deep learning uh and i mean deep in in uh in lots of different ways um related to the transfer of learning uh, across domains and so forth with, with grade twos. It was obviously different because I was in the class with them and so forth. But so I thought, you know, let's give it a try. I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just try and manage. Well, we had, you're not going to believe this, we had 60 grade ones and twos in uh, Google Meet. Uh, of course, they were um, accompanied by either an elder sibling or um, a caregiver of some sort. So that was pretty helpful. And we went relatively slowly in, in a sense. Um, but in other senses, we went quite, uh, quite deeply. Um, so there was a tremendous amount of learning there. The parents and caregivers were extremely excited about the kinds of things that kids could do. We did the art of the links kind of thing. So that kids by the end of the week were creating artistic uh, cr uh, masterpieces, if you like, um, with turtle graphics. Um, they were using repeat statements. They were using, uh, they were writing procedures. They were using random numbers. Uh, I don't think that's in the curriculum grade one, two. No, I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> um, 
but the reality is, and then I did a meta chat. So what, I would do a little demo and then let them go and do a little demo and let them go. And while I was letting them go and they were working on their own there, I do a little meta talk with the, uh, with the adults in the room because I want them to sort of recognize the math that was happening that the kids were actually doing. So when they were doing, for example, I mean, enough of you know enough to know that repeat four, forward 100, right 90 will get you a square. Well, that's the total turtle trip theorem because you have four times 90 is 360. So when it came to doing the triangle, you know, kids at that age, again, aren't supposed to be able to figure out that you can, uh, you know, that three times 120 is 360 and, and that kind of thing. And, and, you know, they struggled with it, but they're supposed to struggle with it. That was the point. That's, the, <laughs> that's what learning is. So anyway, I was very excited about, uh, about doing that. It was the highlight of my summer, quite frankly, well, apart from my grandchildren, but, you know, finally got to see them again. So point being, there are ways to manage links at a, at a grade one, two level. Kindergarten would be hard pressed, but the hardest thing they had was finding the keys in the keyboard. So basically showed them, uh, you know, the shortcuts, FD for forward, BK for back. Mm -hmm. Well, Sarah's going to try it with uh, SKJK to grade three. So she's saying in the chat that she's I'm focusing there with on... <laughs> yeah, so we're going to show you in a minute some of the resources available where you can find things. And and uh, and also we have some virtual visits coming up too, right, Peter? So you never know, these folks might want to join us. With, we do. And, and, you know, Sarah, one of the things that you could do with the kids and anybody could do this is you can create little templates uh, in links that the kids can open up. So there's pre-populated pieces there that they can unpack rather than building from bottom up. So sometimes it's just easier for them to unpack a procedure to understand it rather than building it from, I won't say scratch. But. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyone want to, uh, before we move on, talk about any of those things around your own learning? Any concerns or questions that you have that are surfacing? And I hope you heard uh, Lindy say that even if there were not students involved and you wanted to delve into coding yourself and just make it about you for this project, that that would be okay as well. So if that's, um, if that's, if there's some barriers there around getting students involved, um, that can happen way later in the process or not at all. All right, Manpreet has a question. Yes, there are reference cards available. So we're gonna give you a walk around the sites that um, will support you in your work with links in just a second. Um, and that's where you'll, you'll see that. So give us a minute and we'll get to that. Anything else? Lots of connections happening in the chat, so that's good. All right, so let's move on. And, uh, feel free to jump in at any time. So, you know, the other thing about being a, an Ontario educator, which is awesome, is we know that, um, that inquiry is a big part of um, what you're being asked to do as an educator related to our curriculum. And, um, you know, when, when I was with the ministry and we were working on releasing that uh, discussion document on global competencies, I just loved the fact that um, here in our province, we're talking about what deeper learning is. And um, as Peter mentioned before, it can mean transfer. So you learn something so well that you can transfer that learning to another domain, either close, close by and similar to something you're learning, you've been learning or farther away. And I know that when we hear, um, we often hear about these transferable skills to the workplace, but, but really where that, uh, that all started was through that document and talking about deeper learning being the intersection of cognitive, what you know, and really your intra and interpersonal skills. And so one thing that Peter and I are always so excited about is that coding is one of those things um, that kids often want to do um, in, in collaboration with other kids and that excitement that they have and the cheering that goes on when they solve problems and um, the, the way that they can take the, the learning on themselves 
it makes it a deeper learning experience. Just like being on a team sport is really deep for some people or being part of a theater production is, is really impactful for others. It's that interconnection of those three things. So feel free to be pulling from other pieces around what you know, you know, well-being and equity and deeper learning, all those things that are uh, front of mind here in Ontario. And then some of you have already mentioned our next slide is about the new revised math curriculum. Um, and the fact that if you look at, and many of you will not have had a chance to dive into this, you're on holidays, and so you should be. So it's going to be there waiting for you. Don't worry about it if you haven't had a chance to see it. But from grades one to eight, we now have coding in the curriculum in the algebra strand. Um, but one of the things that we love to see is the intersection of social emotional learning and bringing to the forefront those fantastic mathematical processes. And so when you see all these things, reflecting, connecting, problem solving, um, working through challenging math problems, testing different approaches to problems, you know, that's debugging, right, in coding. So there's just so many ways that coding will help you, um, will help you, um, bring to action this some of this revised curriculum you know self-regulation good point Sarah um, it fits into coding really well too. How, turtle trips yeah yeah turtle trips can be journeys I love how you said that to about thinking about cause and effect someone also mentioned um, the literacy connection you know syntax is important um, in in literacy as well and understanding that um, logic and how we say things really matters and it matters in coding as well. So, so there's lots of ways for you to even just be jumping into the thinking piece, into dispositions, um, you know, into collaboration, whatever, whatever way you would like to dive into this is, is up to you. And we, we would love to see your thinking and that'll be part of making this an amazing project overall is the different ways that people engage in coding. All right. So Peter, you um, next. Your next step, I think, to give us a walkthrough and a reminder of um, what's available in terms of links resources. I'll turn it over to you. Sounds good. So, um, so just a reminder that um, you know this uh, this is a federally funded project, um, and they fund this Canadian development of links, which is why it's somewhat central to what we're doing here uh, and sort of a request of you and was a request when you sort of signed up as well. And so you knew what you were getting into, but we know things have changed. Um, and so, but, but, um, but like Brenda and Lindy have said, it can be about your own learning. Um, you know, even if kids aren't involved and if kids are involved, great. And we can use links that way. Um, but if you're using micro bits or other kinds of things as well, one of the things you might want to think about is uh, those transferable skills from one uh, coding platform to another. Is there a transfer that you notice? How do you leverage the transfer? How do you, uh, how do you scaffold that uh, kind of transfer and so forth? Um, so links, uh, sorry, can't, can code to learn? We, we call it can code to learn now because code to learn is sort of a generic term that's been out there a little bit too much. So we use, call this can code to learn. Um, um, so OTF connects is uh, OTF connections is one of uh, one of the projects uh, that uh, that we funded, um, but we also fund the IK Math, the Indigenous Ways of Knowing Mathematics, uh, through and a couple of folks in the audience here are are involved with that. Um, and so that that's awesome. And um, then there's um, what else we've got? My gosh, my brain. Um, we've got a large scale coding for good. Uh, yeah, we have got coding for good. We ran uh, for where we had um, kids code uh, interactive thank you card for uh, essential workers, frontline workers. There's a couple of large scale districts uh, implementations um and so forth and we're actually uh launching a new initiative as next week at the echo camp uh which we'll tell you about shortly as well we're launching the beauty of mathematics uh, interestingly enough uh and um, we'll have virtual visits and so forth so i'm going to actually 
um, take you to these sites now because this is this is the go-to place uh, so you're asking about cards and that kind of thing all sorts of learning in these places so I'm gonna bail out of this whoops a daisy and go to can code to learn .ca. I just need to uh, new share can code to learn .ca. you should be seeing that now right yep not That's quite yet, but hang on a second. I think it's coming. coming. In. Yeah, and I'll watch the chat. If there's any questions that come in, I'll um, right. let you know. How does that sound? It's so not when coming you're, yet. You're no. kidding. No, still see the uh, GIF or GIF or however you want to say it. Oh, there might, we go. Yeah, but you might have seen it anyway um, because it's on the, it's on the top slide anyway. Oh, <laughs> right on. <laughs> the there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so cancodelearn.ca can be your go-to place, if you like, um, because it links uh, to the other two places um, that were on the previous slide. Um, our French version is not up to speed yet, so forgive us for that, pardon, because we have, um, we've been revising things, and there'll actually be a somewhat of a major revision between now and next week, but point being that you can go in here, you can click on this, and it will describe to you what links is and then different ways to learn links. So there's a getting started guide, uh, that's a PDF. Um, so that has, you know, if you like learning things sort of decontextualized, uh, just, you know, what things are, you can, you can do that. Um, so I'm just going to, um, I don't know what will happen here. You'll probably not see it. Yes, we do. Oh, you do getting started with links? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so, you know, it's the kind of thing that you would expect for uh, a manual, if you like, you know. So it tells you how to add the turtle, how to add clip art, how to make uh, uh, clickable turtles, color detection, collision detection, uh, the project tree, and that kind of thing. And then it just walks you through that. Okay. So there's that. Um, are you back to my slide now? We are, yes. Looks good. Thank you. Um, and then when I go back here, um, so that's the getting started guide. And then we have other topic guides that are in booklet style. And um, those are, um, there's the intro level. So if you want to learn how to make an interactive story with uh, links, that will get you through that. And interactive story for teacher, uh, with teacher notes. There's a more intermediate level, so you can create a, a race simulation. Same thing, it's a PDF that you can access. And then a more advanced level, so we're getting into game making. Um, we don't have our videos attached to these yet. Uh, we don't have videos for some of these actually, but we will for, uh, for many more things than what, you, than what are currently here at this point. So those are the sort of the project guide uh, pieces. I'm just going to go back to what is Link's uh, homepage here, just to keep us focused. And then these will all be rearranged uh, and reorganized next week, uh, but uh, you, you'll be able to find them probably more easily. And um, so, you know, for uh, drawing kids into being mathematicians, there's a set of cards. So if you click on these, you'll get those. And you can either watch them here, have the kids watch them here, you watch them here, stop them, whatever suits you. You can go to the actual uh, Google slide deck and download them as PDFs or just use the slide deck instead of doing them here. Uh, there, will, there are um, some recorded webinars that are attached to some of these and there will be tutorials, as I said, tutorial videos made for some of these as well that will be you know a little sharper pace than the uh, than what you would see in a webinar recording. Um, that's what I'm just, that's what Sarah was referring to, right? About attending those, I think. Yes, <clears throat> yes. I think it was Sarah that said that. Here's a question for you, Peter. <clears throat> yeah. Samantha has a great question here. Do we have templates so that they might follow the same format when they're creating their resources if they if they like it and find that it works. We could do that, right? 
We could do that. Um, this template um, is quite different from the other, from every other template in the collection. Um, so we can provide both templates uh, mm -hmm. if you like, or we could co-create one if that's better, and uh, we can make a make a better template or one that suits. What we don't do. Um, and uh, you know this won't suit everybody, but what we don't do is we don't tie things to specific expectations. Um, oh, maybe we'll get, to, I don't wanna to get too much into that right now, but. Um, but doesn't mean others might not do, other no. people can do that if they like. Oh yeah, please yeah, do. Yeah, because they're means. saying that teachers are very, they're gonna be wanting that kind of thing. So that to, by all are. means they can do that, yeah. And it's really quite e well, relatively easy to do the overall expectation for math coding with these. Somewhat easy to do the overall expectations and a little easier to do specific expectations for math with these. But Brendan and I are working hard on uh, creating other, um, other curricular connections from social studies and from the arts uh, and from science as well, because it really, we like to see more project-based approach and uh, you'll see that when, uh, next week, or if you come to the Echo Camp or come back to this site, you'll see more of that because of the beauty of mathematics that we're doing. So, um, so there's ge uh, geometry one. Uh, there's an interactive greeting card one. Um, so this just steps you through how to create an interactive uh, Greeting card, create the background, create the text boxes, manage the text boxes, add your message, create pages, navigate your pages, um, put in animation and sound, procedures, all that kind of stuff. How to create secret codes is another one. Can I just jump in there, Peter, when you mentioned uh, greeting cards? Yeah, it, it triggered a memory of that I had with uh, Karen yesterday. She was talking about having a greeting card per season and how that would uh, create a continual learning, you know, a, 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 a yeah, experience, exactly. right? If you think of all the holidays when kids would be, if they were giving greeting cards to yeah. somebody, they can, so you've got them throughout the seasons, right? That's right. 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 So yeah. it's documentation right. over time. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, yeah. So we've modified nice. this on occasion uh, to suit uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, you know, Earth Day, seasons, birthdays, and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how to create secret codes is kind of a kind of a neat one. Uh, basically, it uh, you know it's exactly what you would think. It uh, you use code to um, to convert text to secret code and back again, and and has le simple levels and hard levels. We have a coin toss probability. I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, but that's sort of a, you know, in your probability statistics kind of class. Create a birthday match, uh, also related to, um, same kind of thing related to um, the random numbers and uh, randomization of, of selection to get a birthday match, you know, of gifts and so forth. Uh, create a calculator app is another one that's here. Uh, create a working ecosystem, and that's a little more advanced. Um, uh, create a gravity simulation, written by Ray Mercer, mostly by Ray Mercer. It's pretty cool. Um, and uh, this one's not quite finished yet, but I threw it in here anyway. This is the, this is kind of my favorite. <laughs> because I love the nature, I love the spirals uh, and that, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's the stuff that's there at this point for you. Um, if you were to go off to, um, to linkscoding.org, which is the other site, Uh, sorry, linkscoding.club, we changed the name. It will take you off to, I'll just go to linkscoding.club. Are you seeing that? Yes. Perfect. So this is the official links site where you do your coding. 
uh, you'll notice that we have it in uh, French, uh, Ojibwe, and Mi'kmaq at this point. And we're currently working on a Mohawk version and perhaps a Southern Chichuan version. That's in the works as well. So that's kind of nice. Um, but the you scroll to the bottom, this will give you sort of uh, beginner projects that you can unpack. They're not tutorials, but you can look at them and unpack them uh, to see how it works. Uh, there will be a Terry Fox project run this fall as well. Just uh, keep your eyes open for that. But, but you can go in here and uh, all these, anything in gray is, um, is a comment. So it's like a yeah, notation, if you like. And uh, then you can you know, see the programming and unpack these with, uh, with kids or with your team. Um, what things do. Let me go back. And there's more advanced ones. Same thing, same kind of thing. You can check those out, unpack them. Games, you can unpack those. And then you can see some of the stuff that have been done by some of the hacker gal. Uh, young women in the last period of time. Up here is the help, and this is where you can get to uh, a frequently asked questions section. User guides, uh, it's just text based, so some people would prefer this to find things, but you'll see the quick theme based activity cards that were mentioned in the previous uh, on the cancode2learn.ca site. You'll see the project plans, the notebook style and booklet style, and then the various resource materials. These will be also on the Canco to Learn site. So there's a links color chart. There's a list of all the primitives, the uh, 200 primitives or 400 primitives that exist, um, a vocabulary and syntax listing um, that's there. So, so that's uh, that. Um, yeah, Brenda, anything else there? Do you think, um, I haven't, I think that's, I'm not sure I haven't linked yet, but uh, let me just go here anyway. I'll just go to the Vimeo site that Brenda's been posting from, she's posted all the, all the uh, webinar recordings from the March through June time frame. So there are 64 videos that uh, that exist this is a different view of them but uh you can see the kinds of things that we have here links coding in ojibwe uh the 12 year old we contracted to do some teaching for us <laughs> josh <laughs> awesome. our friend josh he's awesome yeah. uh you know these webinar uh, recordings for interactive father's day card art of the links uh uh some French uh, creating the card uh, in French. Uh, spies with microbits, that's the, the secret codes one. Uh, that's also in French somewhere as well. And then there's the game making series that the hacker gal, the folks ran for us uh, and all sorts of other stuff. And there's a few other things that are more related to digital skills in there too, mixed in, right. but it's not all links. Media right. smarts and that kind of thing. Yeah. Micro bits. Spirals one there. Yep. So that's, cool. that's that. Any questions, folks, about that? What we don't you know. Like... Sorry, go ahead. Someone suggesting Samantha's helping people with other ideas. Who um one of the things you teachers could do is take some of those cards and connect them to curriculum, the Ontario curriculum. Definitely. Unpacking the the cards and the curriculum expectations would be a interesting too. Yeah. 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 Rubrics. That on. Feel free. Building success criteria. We're just brainstorming some things there as you were talking. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, there's a lot of development to be done, and um, you know, we're Canco to Learn is a very small team. We we aren't a company that exists, uh, you know, beyond Canco funding. We're just, uh, you know, a few uh, passionate characters who got together to do stuff. Uh, uh, I'm supposed to be part-time, hasn't been the case. Um, <laughs> uh, part-time, 
um, and Mike Van Quinn um, is, is the more, I wouldn't say corporate, because but he's, he's the chap that uh, owns LCSI, the company that develops uh, links and uh, which Stephen Fabric started back in 1980. So yeah, we're a small yeah. group. Um, but we're small group of passionate people who are, you know, happy to have other people doing, uh, doing stuff that makes sense for teachers, and will, and you'll do it better than, than I, for example. And, uh, yeah. And you had mentioned Echo Camp, and Sarah said she's planning to attend. Um, one of the sessions will be about um, the Terry Fox project. So. Um, if you are looking for alternative or interesting ways to connect to the Terry Fox run at your school or however that's going to work this year, um, there, Lisa and Michael are going to talk about how they're going to use links coding combined with microbits to track uh, student data around how many, how, how your kids are traveling like Terry or whatever way you wanted to honor his his legacy in that way. So that, that that's an interesting project for, for fall too. I think, I think Sarah mentioned in, in her notes to us through the forum that um, uh, Lisa is going to help her out and be the, be a, right. be a brain for her kind of thing. It's, that's great because um, obviously she works with us as well at, on various kinds of things from various, at, at various times. And uh, that's great. Brenda and is leading, and then I'm helping out one that's called the Heart of the Links at the Echo Camp uh, to really focus on uh, th those dispositions uh, around coding um, because we absolutely believe so strongly in that. That's just because of our experience with kids over the years. Uh, there are some really heartfelt stories and uh, that come uh, out of uh, how kids have. You know, coding is not the be all and end all, but for some kids, honestly, that we've just seen some things that have been very cool over the years. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then we're running the art of the links, which will focus more on the, the math uh, kinds of things, but through an art lens and through a culturally responsive pedagogy lens, because we'll be focusing on uh, indigenous art and uh, art of the cultures, um, whatever cultures you happen to have in your schools. Yeah. Right. Oh, man, pre there are so many sessions. Um, there's 135 sessions. Maybe Peter put it up. Yeah, there's a lot of sessions. So a lot of good things going on there. So I, I can't, I don't think I could recommend one except for the one we're doing. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. there's lots of other things in regards to coding. Okay, so there's a whole, there's a whole STEM strand. There's a whole social emotional learning strand. There is um, fall pivot, I think they called it, about how people are changing things up for fall. Uh, equity and inclusion is one strand. And I think there's a fifth one that I'm not remembering right now, but um, we could, we'll put that link in the chat if you'd like to look. I mean, there. certainly. There, uh, there, it is, it, I think there's a charge, it's like $25 or something like that. Uh, Digital sure. pedagogy, thanks Meg. If you're looking to have uh, have something that relates specifically to links, then uh, there are four of them. Uh, well, no, there's more than that because there's the hacker gal folks are doing uh, things as well. Um, Brenda and I are doing two in the links. Um, Lisa and Michael Quinn are doing the Terry Fox one that Brenda mentioned. And then Alain is doing one en français. Uh, Le codage en français in links. Okay. All right. If you don't mind sharing our deck again, um, we'll put the link to the Echo Camp in there in a second. Um, but one of the things we wanted to talk about um, just before we move on to budget questions is whether or not how do we stay connected as a community or do we you know even even that so i mean peter and i we don't like we're not fans of creating communities that no one wants and just have teachers feel guilty for not going there <laughs> basically i've been there on that end as an educator um so already in the in the um 
in the chat, you, you've mentioned some things around resources that you're sharing. You've shared Twitter uh, accounts there. Um, some people are planning a virtual conference at the end of this for us to share our resources, which I think is an amazing idea. I'm in for that. I would help with that. Um, so we know that as part of the project, you're going to be sharing artifacts of your learning in whichever way that might be, with students, on your own, whatever you might have. Um, usually what that looks like if we were to have a guess, it might be things like your lessons or units or projects or images um, or um, videos sometimes people share, those kinds of things. That's examples of things people have shared in the past. Their reflections as educators on what their learning has been all about. Some people create little websites and store resources that they're sharing out at their districts, um, whatever, whatever way you may do that. So those will be um, probably in a Google site that is in the from it that is owned by OTF. OTF will keep that on their their site. And then there's this idea of where your team spaces are and where conversation could happen. And I mean, we would kind of guess that you would have your own team spaces. But one question we wanted to pose to everyone is whether you wanted us to facilitate a space where you might more transparently share some of the things you're doing as you progress. Or totally, that might not be something the group wants. Maybe you want to just be working in your team spaces, kind of all on your own, um, and until it's time to share. Um, we, we don't have a hashtag necessarily yet, or actually I thought we did have a hashtag. So there could be Twitter. Um, we could also, and the next slide will show, um, we also have access to taking it global space in terms of group sharing for conversations, for resource posting, for asking questions, sharing resources. Um, so those are, those are the kinds of questions we kind of wanted to ask. Um, you know, some of our boards will be like Karen suggesting um, more of a Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. Some of our groups will have Office 365. So we'll be in different platforms. Some districts will be saying D2L is the place to be. So we do have that challenge around, um, around what people might prefer. And, and Samantha uh, said, Lindy, yeah, it's asking what in? do we what do we mm -hmm. usually use for projects? We use all different kinds of things. It really does depend on um, the kind of sharing that people want to do. Like for the TLLP, for example, we use we used different things until we came up with Teach Ontario, and then Teach Ontario became a place where people shared their learning. Um, so, I mean, I, I really think it depends on what people want to do here. We, we weren't even sure, as Brenda and Peter and I spoke about it, we really weren't sure how much communication you wanted to have and how much um, beyond your own teams you wanted to have. Um, so we will definitely have the space for the artifacts, but this is really our opportunity to decide what we want to do. And I'm seeing lots of different ideas coming up on the, uh, on the chat. And they all have pluses and minuses. Yeah, mm. of course. Um, so if we create, so if something is created like a Google Classroom or um, a Teach Ontario site or the TIG site, um, in some senses, it means you need to go there. If it's Twitter, Mm, it depends on who uses, you know, if you, if you're a regular Twitter user and you run a hashtag stream, mm -hmm. um, you know, that'll work for folks there. Uh, if there's something that's run, for example, that uh, you can subscribe to notifications, at least you get notifications and you can set up, then you don't have to actually remember to go somewhere you get a notification in your email, either a digest of the day or the week or, uh, you know, as it happens. Um, a Google uh, discussion group, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, we tossed that around. They still exist, strangely enough. So uh, even though oh. they said we were canceling them, but. Yeah, I thought it was Yahoo that was canceled and Google had kind of taken over. I know that the Association of Computer Studies Educators moved over to Google. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, coding connections is the the hashtag. I've been I'm looking at people in the chat there, 
sharing resources, it looks like people would appreciate a space to share. And Meg's saying if it was something already available as opposed to a new place, that would be good. Um, Sometimes you can do something very um, simple because, I mean, I think it's just really a, a question of being able to post comments and share ideas um, so I'm, I'm not really sure which way to go in this. I, I know it's saying if there's something that already um, exists, but in ways, you know, we, we almost need our own place that maybe is housed on another bigger site, but we, we do need our own place, I think. Mm -hmm. Google Groups, yeah. And I do the same with, uh, I do the same with Teach Ontario. I just uh, subscribe to notifications and then I only need to pay attention to the new things that are added. Yeah. I wonder if we could do that with a group there. I don't know. I mean, we could do a group on Teach Ontario. That wouldn't be very hard to uh, set up if that's what we want to go. Maybe what we should do is maybe Brenda, Peter and I should take away all of these um, ideas that have come yeah. forward. I mean, I think at this point we were interested to see whether there was interest in having mm -hmm. something and it looks to me like there is. Yeah. So um, let's just think about it and maybe we can come back to the group and say, okay, we've thought about all the options and we think that for what you're expressing here, that will be the best way to go forward. Yeah, and obviously Twitter is great for um, certain kinds of things uh, and not for other kinds of things. So it's, you know, it's the same with each each tool, mm -hmm. same old problem. I mean, Meg's pointing out we're all, if we're already going to the CAN Code to Learn site, which is a Google site, could we somehow embed a group in there or whatever? So, so give us that to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were... We were, Definitely. Uh, Brenda and I were chatting about that one yesterday. Yeah. Exactly that. Um, okay. We decided not to do it because we didn't, thought, well, we better find out what everybody wants first because Brenda and I have uh, run a lot of communities over the years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A, a lot of and, various challenges. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to, so, and, and a lot of folks who are already super, as people have said, um, active on Twitter, they've sort of figured that out as their, as their place to be sharing and storing information and linking to people, et cetera. So maybe we can have a combination of those things. I agree. I think that sounds like yeah. a, a very good way to proceed, but we'll get back to people and tell you exactly yes. where we land on that. Yes. Thank you for being so willing to share everyone. That's really, yeah, that's great. That's really awesome. It's a great group here for sure. Um, okay. So Lindy, I think it, over to you with um, some of the budget questions that people might have in their minds. We've already heard about how people are adjusting some of their funding for in, in great ways. So they may have some more questions. Yeah, I mean, I actually wanted to throw this open to to the kinds of questions that you had. I know that there were, we started to get some more questions about whether since you can't use the money for um, release time as easily as we had initially anticipated, would it still be okay to buy equipment? And the answer is still no, because the funder doesn't allow that. So we, we can't, you know, use the money for that. But I have heard some um, folks figuring out different ways that they might use the, uh, the funding that is available to them. And of course, so far, we have just flowed to you, regardless of what you think your final budget is, we have flowed to you 60% um, of what the highest amount you could have gotten was. And so the plan is when we get your interim report in November, we would flow the next amount to you. But by that time, we need to know what your budget, you know, by that time, it has to be firmed up. Um, so truly, Brenda, I just wanted to throw it open to people um, who might still have some budget questions and we could take a few minutes just to talk about, um, you know, what is and isn't possible as people are thinking about it. So I don't know if anybody has some specific questions. Everybody knows what they're doing with their money. Yeah, well, so was, we've heard, go, go for it. Sorry. I was wondering, so we purchased um, climate action kits and micro bits and uh, Sebastian organized to have it um, sent to the students in Kenya and they've already been exploring them. And we ordered, a, you know, five kits for ourselves to run centers, but now that's not um, realistic. 
Uh, could we use some of those funds to buy additional micro bits so that students can be assigned a micro bit or a one to two ratio? We'll figure out there's a cleaning process uh, supposedly out there. Like, would that be okay? Brenda? I wish we could. We can't. This is just a legal agreement with the federal government uh, around this piece of it. So we can't. So I'm curious then, what are other creative ways that we could use the, uh, the funding? You're the creative spender, Zelia. Come on. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good question. Okay, so writing What about resources, writing teams, resources? Guests yeah. or experts that could come and work with your students in some way, shape, or form. Daniel, I think, switched his uh was looking for some additional different kinds of resources right daniel so you switch some of your funding there to your right. own, for your resources for your own learning right so uh we were looking at coding right and i thought uh game design and learning online but there was a subscription fee so i was contemplating using some of that money to to get some a master class for myself uh, and my colleagues so we could learn about game design, and then we can share that with the kids, right? Uh, if we can learn from the master and then have it trickle down to the kids. Uh, but I'm, you know what I'm really encouraged to hear from uh, Peter, Brenda, and Lindy about this project? This is really about teacher learning. And it reminds me a lot about the TLLP. We do want the students to learn coding, but really I'm, I'm getting that there's this really strong emphasis on our, us as educators learning. And uh, because we'll be impacting hundreds, thousands of kids if we know more moving forward. Right. Mm -hmm. So so what I would say is to think of something that might uh, contribute to your own learning and strengthening um, your understanding. I love that some people would think about getting an expert and think about getting an expert if you happen to find one that you'd really love to come by. Um, you can share that with other people. Um, who aren't part of your project and you will become very, very popular. We saw that a lot in the TLLP where, um, you know, they, they were able to reach out to folks who were very highly regarded, um, even, even people in areas like, um, oh, now, now it's going to escape my mind just because I'm on holiday. But, um, you know, um, growth mindset so uh, Carol Dweck and people like that agreed to share their time with some of the groups. And so that time was also shared with other teachers in that school. And so you can just imagine the impact on that of that was, you know, multiplied. So yeah, be creative about the things that we can say yes to. It's, it's a bit frustrating because I know um, that, you know, the obvious thing would be to buy equipment, but we, we just can't allow it because the, the, um, the specification in the contract is so clear that we're not allowed to do that. But yeah. Hopefully those of you who are going to Echo Camp will save your re receipt and you can right. submit it as part of your learning here for your um, project. Yes, virtual, virtual conferences, conferences, yes. yes. Absolutely. Um, somebody even asked about a uh, membership in one of the subject associations. So... Mm -hmm. Coding um, posters. Yeah. Coding posters, yep. Yep, resources. Games that are coding influenced. So that sounds like unplugged type of games that aren't technology hardware. I think that would be fine, right? Peter, he's given us a thumbs up. Yay. Okay. But I'm going, to, I'm going to keep saying, please, um, as much as possible, focus on your own learning. So again, as you report mm -hmm. that if you bought some posters, for example, it's what are you learning from those posters that you then pass on to the students? Mm -hmm. Um, I think teaching resources, from my perspective, from where I'm sitting, it's much easier to say, yeah, that's a great idea, more than student resources per se. But of course, sometimes the resources that the teacher uses are also the, the resources that the students use. So just keep thinking about your own learning, and that should guide you. And maybe, again, this could be one of those areas that... Um, you know, you're going to discover some incredible things that you could do with the money that you might not have otherwise done. And that might really boost your own learning. I'm hoping so. Mm -hmm. Sarah, can you grab the mic and tell us your idea there a little bit more about it? Sarah, 
Hi, it's, it's Sarah Vance. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you, yeah. Okay. Uh, when we originally did our proposal, we had, look, we have a, a beautiful foyer. And one of the things we really wanted to focus on, because we are a um, uh, full that's focusing on social and emotional well-being, and we have self-regulation practitioners at our school, we really wanted to think about um, a, a kind of alternative environment um, where, where kids could, could flow into that had something like, like let's say, flexible seating, uh, shelving units with books, um, a table, for example, some flowers, for example, where uh, as they're moving through the school, they might sit um, and, and work on their Chromebook to, to do some programming. And, and at the same time, maybe there's a teacher there on, on their prep, you know, that's sitting there and having a conversation with them. Um, or um, small group learning is happening. When we wrote our original proposal, we asked to allocate fifteen or uh, fifteen hundred dollars um, to create um, a micro environment like that, um, where it's not a classroom. It's it's not specifically staffed by anyone, but it's it's a space where learning occurs flexibly, especially when you have those dysregulated students that sometimes are transient in the school or struggle to, to be in the regular classroom at all times. And that's a, that's a space where we could flexibly um, uh, use those times when they might be dysregulated to focus on something like programming. Um, and we had, yeah, we initially proposed $1,500 to that and, um, and a larger sum to release time. And I'm thinking that we may have a more difficult time um, getting supply coverage or doing release projects, especially if some of us are virtual this year. Uh, so I wondered about looking at that space as well and really linking it to the Shanker model of a self-regulation space or a microenvironment, which is something he calls for in, in, his, in, his, um, in his philosophy. What are your thoughts on that? So what would the purchases actually be? Like, Sounds like furniture and that. For example, kind of thing. It, it may be a, a seating area. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the idea. Um, I'm, I'm all about flow rooms and uh, and that kind of space. And uh, Brendan and I just happen to love the whole cave. Uh, what's the name of that book, Brendan? Um, from from campfire to holodeck. Yeah, it's, not, it's the same <laughs> yeah. kind of idea to accommodate uh, people and kids. Um, I think your problem is you have to be able to tie it into the um, to the coding piece that we're doing here, so it, it can't feel completely um, disconnected from it. I also just want to say one thing about the release time. It's more a caution than anything else. So remember how at the beginning of the meeting I spoke about how much time you still have to roll out your project. And I think we really don't know what things are going to look like by the time we reach November or December or January. It's very possible that it will be difficult to have supplies right now, but maybe that will open up a bit and you may want to have some uh, release time later on in your project, even if what the release time is that you're looking for is time to write up what you've done. So just be really careful that you don't completely um, uh, expend the funds and then not have enough um, available to you for release time is all I would say. So it's, it is really difficult to say yes or no definitively, but I do think if you are thinking about things that are a little bit outside of um, a direct connection to your project, you should just send us an email um, and uh, then we can take a look at it and make sure that uh, we're saying yes, that's a possibility or no, that's really, that really feels a little bit outside. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a good plan. Yeah. Because there might be, I mean, Sarah, if it could involve some of the unplugged things, that might work for, for your idea. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'd have to, we'll have to make, just double check and make sure. We, we have someone at the, at the government that we can check with, so. 
if you can email yeah. us, that would be great. Yeah. And it, yeah, email, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are some books, like I, I saw somebody just uh, quoted the deep dive mm -hmm. book, which that's another thing that you can easily spend your funding on. Um, stuff that really helps you to learn more about um, inquiry and um, collaboration, things like that. Those are, those are all great resources. Um, Brenda, I'm conscious of time. Yes. Okay. And, um, so, um, yeah, let's wrap up, Peter. Um, you want to finish off there? Sure. And um, we're just about, we're one minute over, so we're doing well. Not bad. Not bad. Let me just, uh, I thought we were so far ahead of time no. there for a while. <laughs> we, were, yeah, no. we were going to run um, French workshops for links, and we are still happy to do that. So if there's any desire for that, we can run, uh, you know, one hour example introduction to the links platform. So please just let us know in the chat if you would like that, and we will arrange that and post it for everyone to, to see. Um, that would be the best thing we can do. Um, the other question is, is there a desire still for a Micro Worlds Junior webinar? Um, so Micro Worlds Junior, just as a reminder, is the pre-reader version of links, of logo, that has to be installed on a computer. Uh, it cannot run on, and it has to be installed on a Macintosh that is pre Catalina or a Windows uh, operating system. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, Rochelle, you have, you have that equipment, right? Uh, one of those. Could you stay for a minute afterwards and we could set up a time for that or Let's figure out some. That. Let's do yeah. that. So why don't we yeah. do that with. And uh, for French. Same with French. If you want to stick around mm -hmm. just for a few minutes, we'll, We'll get you sorted out. And so over to you, Brenda and Lindy. All right. Um, so if there's any other questions, I, I think um, that was sort of what we had, had wanted to kind of share and get people um, talking about. I hope, I hope that you've got some good ideas from others uh, on, on our, in our community here. I certainly have. So um, I love hearing how people are managing things and excited about the year. So that's such good news for all of us to hear. Um, Lindy, do you have any finishing words that you want to, yeah, and by I, all means, anyone can email us if something occurs to you after this meeting, for sure, just reach out. Two very quick things. I, I do want to remind everybody that we're very flexible. So if you haven't landed completely on your projects, we still have lots of time for that kind of flexible thinking. And part of capturing that flexible thinking would be really important to us. Um, also, I want to say again, please do look at the interim report template that is on the OTF website under OTF Coding Connections because by looking at it, you'll kind of be able to think ahead to what it is your next kind of reporting requirement is. So uh, please do, uh, do uh, take some time to do that. I will be creating over the coming weeks the final report template and your reflection sheet. Um, so those will be available to you too. So all the time as you're working through your projects, please be thinking about tracking um, your learning and what it is you've been doing um, as you go on your journey. For us, that's very, very important, as important. The process is as important, if not more important um, than the product. So Absolutely. that's it from me. Thanks to everybody. All right. So if you're interested in uh, Mike Rhodes Jr. or French, if you could stick around for a couple minutes. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking some of your holiday time to be with us. And we'll follow up with an email soon. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Bye. Best of luck for the beginning of school. Thanks, everybody. See you all Bye. later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care.